It is a fabulous day in Miami, as always it is. And I have a very special guest today, Nitin Matwani. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm so excited because it's not every day you have a $4 billion guy that you're investing. So please um, join me with this uh, exciting venture for the next 15, 20 minutes. Nitin, I'm not here as a broker only sells to, to her people. I'm Turkish. But I'm also a buyer. I'm also an investor who believed in your dream and, and followed your dream for years. Before I met you, I bought a Nativo. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. And then now it's all in the neighborhood. I, it's all in the neighborhood. You're not going to ask me a pass. You know, to my anniversary <laughs> now, okay? And also, I'm a very uh, proud future owner of the Unit 2208. I bought a beautiful studio. Please take very good care of that. Absolutely. I want some special things, okay? <laughs> But uh, we Turkish people, when we do business with people, we want to get to know about them a little bit. So I will have four or five questions to you, and then um, we will keep it brief. But before I start asking the questions, guys, I want to tell him how much I appreciate him for not giving up on the dream. Nitin, you built it, and we came. So I appreciate for that. Thank you. And it's not just me or my brother buying. I, my, my best friends, a lot of people in Turkey, we believe in you. We believe in Miami. So this is a very exciting project. But when I talk about the, our project in downtown Miami, my excitement is very obvious. I bought myself. But the, the second question they ask, hey, who is this developer? And I know it's a, it's a teamwork. I know that you represent your team. But I always talk about you. I say, he is this very humble guy, young, humble guy. I've been seeing you a lot during the construction. I say, he is always at work on hands. You know, you, you take the ownership of your project, and I have a lot of respect for that. They said, we want to get to know him. So that's why we are taking your very valuable time to ask a couple of questions. And the last thing is, we Turkish people, when we meet somebody, when we are going to do business with them, we ask a couple of questions. Like, the first one is, where are you from? Who is your father? What does he do? Where did you go to school to? This is how we get to know people. Do you mind sharing your, your story a little bit with us? Not at all. Thank you. So uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for your support. Uh, you know, we grew up as a family I have uh, with my mom and father and brother in Fort Lauderdale on the beach. Um, and they had a dream. Uh, we bought a motel on Fort Lauderdale Beach. And it was right when spring break ended. Uh, we weren't aware of that. So it was 1986. So Fort Lauderdale went into disarray. Um, people were foreclosed. We lost spring break. There was no business to back it up. But the city had a dream, and the city's dream was to create a family destination, a luxury destination. And my mom and father, as immigrants, which as Indians, you know, share a lot of the same cultures as, as the lovely Turkish folks that are that you uh, you represent. It, we, we rolled up our sleeves and we lived and worked as children in these properties. My parents were there. And through that effort, um, they were able to acquire one block and then uh, start acquiring a second block over the course of almost 10 years. Uh, and worked day and night with the city to improve Fort Lauderdale's image. Um, so a couple tough things happened. Um, the, uh, uh, yes, my father did. That he was in the hotel business. Unfortunately, through this experience, he passed early. Um, but um, on, I was 15, and, but my mom was a remarkable woman and continued to carry the torch. And uh, through that, we just completed the four seasons in Fort Lauderdale with Fort Capital, our partner, um, to, which set up a new standard in Fort Lauderdale. So, you know, watching my parents put their blood, sweat, and tears into something and now seeing how my mom walks down the beach, she lives in one of the projects we built. It's amazing. You know, it's like it's fun to see this place that we rode our bikes and grew up in you know, as housekeepers and desk clerks and, and, and waiters at our restaurant, you know, now we're at the Four Seasons. So it's exciting, and my brother carries the torch in, in Fort Lauderdale in the downtown. Uh, and then I got involved um, with this, what's now known as Miami World Center. Um, so you asked the school I went to, I went to Duke University in North Carolina. Um, I then went to Goldman Sachs in New York and was an investment banker, uh, and then left and got my master's at Columbia University. So I moved back in 04, I got linked up with some great partners, and we started what's now referred to as Miami World Center. Um, so we survived the financial crisis, we survived the retail apocalypse, 
But we always had one vision. Our key vision was, when you looked at Miami, we had this incredible global brand. And if we're being honest, we just had not yet lived up to that brand. And so we said, you know, if you think about how cities operate, it's generally what is surrounded by arts, culture, entertainment, transportation, education. Those are the neighborhoods that really flourish. And we were really the beach and then Brooklyn and a little bit of downtown. Um, and it was kind of strange. So we rolled up our sleeves. We got to work with the elected officials and we started explaining to them what we had a vision for, which was this 27 acre mixed use project that put the pedestrian first. So we closed down two streets to cars. You can only walk on them, ride a bike, push a stroller. We created a $5 million art and public places campaign, which we just released at our Basel last year. I mean, I'm sorry, last week. And it was extraordinary to see the level of interest from all of the VIPs at our Basel because of the collection of artists that were excited to be a part of this outdoor museum that we have. We opened our first restaurant, Laurel, which is a Michelin star chef, <laughs> local chef that we're incredibly excited about. And tomorrow morning we'll be at Sephora's grand opening. And so this year in 2022, we have leased over 150,000 square feet. We're about to announce another 60,000 square feet in the next few days. That puts us at 90% leased. So all throughout next year, you'll continue to see more restaurants and fashion stores open. We've, we've built 200,000 square feet of public space. We built bike lanes. We've done all this great stuff because we could. We invested over a hundred million dollars before we built a building to improve all of the infrastructure, infrastructure at Miami World Center. And so then when COVID hit, you know, I have chaired economic development for our city for 10 years. We would go out and tell the story of Miami World Center. We would tell the story of Miami. But when COVID hit, the best kept secret was released, which is Miami is the best place in the world <laughs> to live and invest. And you don't have to wait until you retire to enjoy your life. I think people's perspective changed. So as a result, we've had Ken Griffin and Citadel move their headquarters here. The market's down 20% this year. He's up 30%. He could live anywhere he wants. He's chose Miami. You look at CI Financial. Their $300 billion Canadian asset manager sets up their U.S. headquarters. Blackstone in the building right behind us not only leases space but buys the building. Goldman Sachs, Point72, all these, Starwood Capital, these incredible institutions. I mean, we've created over 9,000 jobs in the last two years with 81 companies moving to downtown Miami. So for me, it's very exciting. Um, part of that is the story of Miami because people finally understand what we've been trying to yell from the mountaintops, but also with Miami World Center uh, because you know, there's a Henry David Thoreau quote is, you know, it doesn't matter what you, what you look at, it matters what you see. And so a lot of people could see the vision, right? Our team that's worked with us tirelessly to, to sell this dream of Miami World, our partners at One World Properties have done such a great job on multiple projects for us. But then also for people who just couldn't visualize it to see it physically, like you've done, have a glass of wine and a great dinner and then go across the street to shop. I mean, this is the stuff we dreamed of and I'm just so excited that people could finally experience it. Absolutely. I can't imagine how excited you are because I get so excited about the L'Oreal people. Yesterday told me, are you here again? It's just, I want to live here, you know? The other day I saw a machine on our field in 600, there was a construction machine. Yeah, absolutely. And there was some digging doing. I just sit on that construction machine. If you see a crazy woman in the middle of the night, it's me. So if I am this exciting, this must be such an incredible experience for you. This is wonderful. I. I remember in 2019 when I first bought Nativo, I didn't know you. Yes, okay. So all I could see was the shops, the stores, that renderings that you had for Miami World Center. Whatever I sold in, in downtown Miami, I always used your vision to be able to transform. And thank God a lot of people saw that. So, so we are here today. So if, if we ask in general, what, you already touch base a lot to that, but why Miami? Why? Why people should come to Miami? Um, our mayor did such an incredible job with that question, like how can I help? Absolutely. I think that helped us. So what are the things of, uh, that makes Miami so attractive for, for investors? Well, can you it, it all depends how much time you have, because I, I could talk about this one for a while. <laughs> but look, our, our thought is this. When you think about other great cities in the United States, we are one third the age of New York. So I have three children. 
But as they grow, they grow exponentially, right? Their personalities, their intelligence. But think about the future of Miami. We're not stuck by things that people created 300 years ago. We're a young city. So what does that mean? We can invest in new industries. We can have a diverse culture. We are the city of the future. This is what every city in the United States will look like. Fun, vibrant, fun-loving people. It's incredible. And what was missing? What was missing is folks coming from where I'm from, or for you, where you're from. Turkish Airways has direct flights. Qatar has direct flights. Emirates has direct flights. They're working on direct flights to China, to Japan. So these are areas, the only areas in the world that pre previously did not love or discover Miami, which has changed That's completely. Right. I mean, we had in some of our projects, you know, top 10 buyers from Turkey, India, China. So the world has discovered Miami. The domestic United States market has rediscovered Miami. We have incredible weather, that's for sure. We have incredible taxes, that's for sure. But I think it's our youth as a city that is attracting all of these companies. It's attracting us, we have the largest cruise port in the world. Six million cruise passengers. More cruise passengers, Rich Carlton just is launching a cruise line, Four Seasons is launching a cruise line all out of Miami. And so when you think about the evolution of hospitality and tourism, we're setting the bar on the best hotels. We're setting the bar on the best cruise lines. We're setting the bar on the city that everybody wants to visit. And it may be for personal reasons, for fun, it may be for business reasons, maybe to just recharge. Medical tourism, right behind us, University of Miami's medical campus, the fourth largest in the country. I mean, there's so many reasons to come to Miami. Um, and I think the big thing that we were missing was this base of talent for the industry. And now with all these hedge funds and finance and private equity and tech companies, but we never had technology companies. And now we have unicorn after unicorn either being established here or moving here. So it, we're, we're just getting started. You know, this is such a young city. Our future is just so bright. So bright. Like it's it's unbelievable to watch. You know, it's so interesting. I always listen to you, read to you, or work on your projects, but I... For the first time, I hear the sentence, we are the one-third of the age of New York. This is such a vision because I sometimes telling people, hey guys, buying here is buying next to Eiffel Tower 30 years ago. Right. Or buying something in New York 50 years ago. That's exactly what you're talking about. This is, we are such a young city and we are so blessed to, to be a part of right downtown Miami, this is unbelievable. Again, thanks to your vision and, and being well, patient through the through the thick and the tin and the COVID and all that stuff, not giving up on that. It's, 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 it must be tough. You know? I mean, you know, how many times can you find 27 acres of land, which we didn't find. We bought from over 140 <laughs> parcels, so that was tough. Yeah, and then there used to be 300 semi-trucks per hour that serviced the port going through our property. So we worked with the city to get a billion-dollar tunnel built, which got rid of all the trucks. Oh my and then we worked with the city to get $4 billion of other infrastructure. The Perez Art Museum, the Frost Science Museum, the Adrian Arts Performing Arts Center. Brightline invested $5 billion to build a train station that's open and running that services the entire state, including Orlando, which has the number one tourist destination in the country. Beckham is building his soccer stadium you know, right there. I can point to it. It's right there. The Marlins Park is right there. And so I think when you take all of those things and surround it, surround, you're, just, you're just surrounded by billions of dollars of investment outside of the $4 billion that we're spending. So if we're surrounded by arts, culture, entertainment, transportation, education with Miami-Dade College, the right. largest college in the country adjacent to our site, it's hard to understand, hard to think about you know, where else in the world you could do something like True, good to be true. Well, but 16 years of yeah, hard yeah, blood, sweat, and tears to make that, but, but yes, at yes. this point, it's too good to but be true. But it is true, guys. But the, this will bring my next question, but in fact, we answered that. My question was sometimes, as an investor, not just as a broker, because when I sell something, I have to believe, and if I don't buy myself, I won't sell it. Sometimes I think about myself, oh my God, are we going to be able to fill up all this around? Probably we're going to have maybe 3,000 units. Hopefully if we open up the convention center and the hotel, we are going to have around 3,000 units allowing short-term rentals, you know, up or down. So I was wondering, will we be able to provide a good occupancy to our investors to keep their income levels high? But what you are saying with the, with the bright line and what's going on at the port, I guess we will have no problem with the occupancy for our 
new project 600 or Cor Crosby or we will have enough occupancy for our people, right? You, you know, Miami is one of those strange cities where we're just getting started from a hospitality standpoint. Even though we're known for hospitality, we've never had this level of excitement from so many different places. So if 81 companies have moved here, think about the business travel that comes around with them. If you have University of Miami's medical campus, which is one of the largest travel for, for tra medical tourism, right there, and there's nowhere for those people to stay. And if someone comes for a procedure, they don't want to stay in a hotel room. Right? They need kitchens, they're coming with their families, they want to shop, they want things to do. When you look at the cruises that are coming out of Miami, Virgin Voyages just launching, Four Seasons, Ritz-Carlton, Celebrity Beyond, I mean, there's so many incredible high-end cruises across the street. Well, when six million people come, they don't fly in that morning. They fly in a few days before, they fly in a few days after. And you mentioned all of the different conventions. We've got events every month. We just finished Art Basel. It was the craziest time here. The South Beach Food and Wine Festival. You've got you know, all of the, the music conferences, the, uh, the uh, arena. Oh, the Ultra Music Festival, the and, book and festival. The yeah. arena across the street, all the concerts and events we have. Not to mention, we'll connect directly to Disney World next yeah. year at Miami World Center. The stop literally drops you off on 6th Street, which is where 600 my Absolutely. World Center is. It can't and get so better than that. When yeah. 62 million people <laughs> visit Orlando last year, like, I think the odds okay. are we'll get a fair amount. I took my time. question back. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, a, a simple question. Have you been to Turkey? I have been to Turkey. Oh. Um, I, went, I went a while ago. I actually went to Bodrum. And oh. it was, so, it was briefly in Istanbul and then was in Bodrum. And I'm actually, this summer, trying to find my way back. You have a wonderful airline. That airport is incredible. Thank you. The, you know, I gain about five pounds in the lounge every time because there's just so many <laughs> options to eat. That's why I go to Turkey. It's, it's, it's in the lounge. unbelievable. <laughs> but I, I'm hoping uh, summer of 2023 to, to go back with my family because my kids have not yet been. Oh, my God. We would love to host you. Oh, thanks very much. Let us know if, if we can do anything for you. You have a, you have a huge Turkish family now. Well, I appreciate I'm that. You, I love you know, it. Everybody will be happy to host you, to, to make some Turkish tea or coffee for you. Know that. And you sweets, have, please. Have a Turkish yeah, 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 yeah. I have a sweet too. Good, good. Tur <laughs> baklava, yeah, okay. Turkish baklava, Turkish delight. All of the above. Okay, perfect. When are we having a Turkish kebab restaurant here? Like, you have all these Turkish I'm, people. Listen, I'm, I'm looking. So, okay. you know, <laughs> you find me the right operator or someone, someone out there. Yes, that has yes. One, please I, I please <laughs> reach out. I love the food. It okay. would be my pleasure. Perfect. Last but not the least, um, we have a tradition when we go into somebody's house or when we build our houses. What we do is we use, can I show you something? Sure. We have these things to protect you from bad luck. Or I still to, have mine from my last trip to Turkey. You do? Great. I do. Perfect. So I brought you two. One for your home. Thank please, you. That's very kind of And the second is for the groundbreaking of the 600. What? When we do the groundbreaking on the concrete, we are going to put it like this. You know, it will be visible. So people, when they come in, you'll do a corner, maybe not at the middle of the <laughs> street, but in the corner somewhere, yeah. so the bad eyes can see it. Okay. So I'm looking forward to the groundbreaking day. That That's very kind of you. Thank you very and much. It's my pleasure. And I'm not going to let you go without uh, speaking a little Turkish with us. Okay. I want you to repeat after me. All right. I want you to look at the camera and say, I will say one word and you can follow one word. Fair enough. Buralar. Buralar. Hep. Hep. Dutluktu. Dutluktu. Yes. <laughs> All right. That is fantastic. Thank you very much for this. Thank you so much. My it pleasure. Such a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. I appreciate me. your time.